Welcome back. We are in conversation with Rajasthan Chief Secretary C.S. Rajan. Foxconn top management was here and they have been looking around uh, uh, in, in several states to set up facilities. They want to have around, uh, around 10 facilities in India. Of course, solar is one area which they are interested in. in, in. Uh, have you been talking to Foxconn and what kind of feedback we have, have you We have got? been talking to SB Clean, uh, uh, Clean Energy. The SB Clean Energy is a joint venture company which has been floated by SoftBank, by Foxconn and uh, Bharti Airtel. These two, these three together have formed a new company in India called uh, uh, SB Clean Energy and that company, uh, uh, in fact SoftBank has promised an investment of 20 billion dollars in India mm -hmm. and uh, this, the, uh, the chairman of SoftBank was in India recently, Mr. Masayuchi uh, Son mm -hmm. and the two states that he visited, apart from his visit uh, and his appointments in Delhi with the Prime Minister and other big wigs, he visited uh, Telangana, uh, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana and he visited Rajasthan. And in Rajasthan, he has promised an investment of, uh, I won't uh, want to, it's a, it's a, a very, and he says the largest investment in solar generation anywhere in the world, he would be making in, in, in Rajasthan. If you can give us a ballpark figure, above 2 billion, above 4, I, 4 billion? Because I wouldn't want to, because the MOU has not yet been inked. The MOU draft of the MOU has uh, been exchanged between us. Uh -huh. So till the MOU is finalized, I wouldn't want to so put a figure on it. when you sign the MOU, sir? I think the MOU, we are expecting to sign it any time now, any time soon, maybe within this month. Right. Uh, uh -huh. Let's talk about the energy sector now, because we were talking about solar. Uh, you already have a, a good presence in the energy sector as well. Kane has been one of the big ticket investments uh, uh, in Rajasthan uh, uh, and we understand that uh, Kane will, uh, uh, the lease that uh, you have uh, with the Kane, that, that expires in, uh, by 2020. So uh, will you be extending that, ex extending that lease as well? The, there is a production sharing contract. The mm -hmm. production sharing contract, we have, uh, our chief minister had mes met the union petroleum minister, I have met the secretary petroleum and uh, we are uh, lending our weight behind extending the, uh, get, getting the central government to extend the production sharing contract mm -hmm. and we expect that it should ha happen any time now. Mm -hmm. In fact, because of the delay in the uh, execution of the uh, extension of the production sharing contract, mm -hmm. the, invest, uh, the Kane Energy investments in drilling uh, more, uh, more wells mm -hmm. has decelerated. Right. So therefore, we are very keen and uh, as you know, the Kane finds in, uh, in uh, Badmer district of Rajasthan mm -hmm. today has uh, accounts for 47% of the onshore production of crude in the country. Right. And in terms of in terms of total crude, the uh, can finds account for 25% of the total crude production in the country. Mm -hmm. In fact, Rajasthan is today the largest producer of crude oil in the country. Right. Uh, that is it. So therefore, but uh, we want the expert and investment to take place. They are ready. Mm -hmm. They are just waiting for the production sharing contract extension. Mm -hmm. they, they, and they have promised billions of dollars of investment, mm -hmm. which would, I think should also, uh, apart from transforming the oil economy, which also should transform the uh, economy of the state of Rajasthan. Right. So while uh, the uh, PSC, uh, you, know, uh, you know, that process goes on for extension, uh, there is also gas, uh, you know, which Kane, you know, uh, looks for. And... Uh, and we understand that uh, Rajasthan in, in, is, is interested in getting a, a part of that gas which uh, Kane produces. Have you been talking to Kane regarding we this? Have, we have started uh, uh, our, uh, our engagement with uh, Kane on, uh, on sourcing that gas mm -hmm. for meeting the requirements of gas within the state. Mm -hmm. Now, the, we, uh, we, have, we have been in negotiation because there is, as you are aware there, is, uh, there are already some ga gas pipelines which are going through, uh, passing through Rajasthan. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to develop a gas grid. Mm -hmm. which will cover, uh, taking into account the various gas pipelines that are passing through Rajasthan mm -hmm. and, to uh, and basically to try and connect different districts to different pipelines. Right. And thereby, uh, uh, that, that development of that gas grid, that exercise is on and all the major players are involved. All the gas, including the public sector and private sector players are on. Meetings have taken place. Right. Uh, let's talk about the power sector now. And to be honest, you know, uh, the things do not look uh, very good there. You know, 50 to 60,000 crore debt uh, in that sector. Uh, you are part of the FRP. Uh, what is the situation as of now? Because we understand that uh, uh, you wanted to initiate the second, a second phase of uh, debt restructuring as far as your state electricity board is concerned. Uh, what, what is the what is the status actually, as of now? Uh, I think you are, the figure that you quoted was on the lower side. Debt is actually almost close to 90,000 crores mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. But the uh, almost 60,000 crores of this debt was accounted for in the tenure of the uh, five years of the previous government. Mm -hmm. Now, the, and the ba balance debt is either for the period prior to that or post that. Now, this is 
this is this is a problem which has uh, not come about overnight, but it is a problem which has come about over a period of seven to eight years. And there are a number of factors which have uh, resulted in this situation. One is, of course, the fact that for seven consecutive years, the uh, tariffs were not revised. This is probably the only instance of its kind in the country where for seven consecutive years, uh, tariff was not revised. Now that has obviously that is uh, put the clock back. Now. And therefore, we, the model of development that uh, Rajasthan embarked was debt driven. Mm -hmm. So it you know, basically was, uh, instead of generating revenues internally, it was basically uh, um, basically basically reliant on debt the loans. Uh, on on yeah. loans. But what is and the so way forward now? Because you know, not only Rajasthan, oh, no, several other SMEs are in a, in a very bad phase. So, so actually, uh, what has uh, what has happened is that we have uh, there are two three measures that we are taking at, uh, taking at the state level and two, at two, three at the central level. State level, one is, we are trying to uh, privatize some of our uh, distribution as well as our generation assets. Mm -hmm. Now, the idea is that, uh, one is, if you are able to privatize, we will be able to raise, one, will be, two things will happen. One, we will be able to improve the efficiency of operations. One, we will be able to re generate resources by which we can actually plow back into this uh, sector. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and three, offload future uh, liabilities uh, from our balance sheet once mm -hmm. it goes out. Mm -hmm. So towards that end, we have identified cities which are going into uh, going under the hammer for our fra on fra under distribution franchise model, mm -hmm. as uh, the bids are likely to be released maybe by the end of this month. The generation uh, the generation company two levels. One is one generation company uh, a, a, is, a, is a, a, the lignite based company of the in the public sector, mm -hmm. which is uh, which has got it's two, uh, two by 125 megawatt uh, assets in Barmer district. Mm -hmm. That is going to be privatized. Mm -hmm. Then also the generation company itself, we are thinking in terms of disinvestment, uh, uh, divesting a, uh, our uh, large part of our stock in the generation company. How, how much would you want We are to actually having dialogue at two levels. One with the NTPC, mm -hmm. whether the NTPC has also shown interest into investing into uh, the generation company in Rajasthan. Mm -hmm. And second level is through consultants actually going in for an open uh, disinvestment. Right. So both those exercises are currently on right. and uh, there is a task force which has been constituted which is headed by the former Union Power Secretary Mr. Uh, R.V. Shahi mm -hmm. and uh, he is heading a task force this is assisting, assisting us in this uh, privatization effort. Right. That is uh, one. Mm -hmm. The second level is that we are wanting to also uh, leverage the commercial opportunities available in trading in power. The state cabinet has just uh, approved formation of a company which will be uh, tasked with the responsibility of buying and selling power. Mm -hmm. So far, uh, because our uh, we are surplus in power in the night, there are many, st many uh, states, including the city of Delhi, which requires power in the night. So we should try and leverage the opportunities of sale of power when we are surplus, mm -hmm. and then buy power when the power is uh, very low. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, we have already reduced our power purchase, we have reduced our power purchase unit costs, as a result of which already we have the, I think the loss levels have uh, diminished. We have just, we have gone in for one hefty tariff increase last year, uh, this year, and that tariff increase is uh, expected to net us about 4,500 crores per year. So, and uh, so therefore, these are, these are some of the initiatives we are taking place at the state level. Right. At the central level, in fact, on Monday, uh, there is a, a very high level meeting taking place between the Union Power Minister, Chief Minister Rajasthan, I am also on the, uh, uh, there, mm -hmm. and the entire power sector of Rajasthan, the finance, uh, finance, the principal secretary of finance are all there in, attempt to, in an attempt to try and address this issue of this debt overhang. Mm -hmm. Because we have been, we have been urging the central government. What are the government. options in, in, in we are, The option that we are saying is that this three year financial restructuring that was undertaken mm -hmm. was too aggressive. And this and debt overload of this kind, a debt overhang of this magnitude, can't be restructured in a short period of three years. Right. In fact, what it did was it, it made the position even worse. So therefore, we are we, we we believe that this restructuring has to take place over a much longer period of time. So you seek so an extension. Uh, we are seeking that this uh, we should be this uh, there should be a review of this uh, restructuring program mm -hmm. because the bank, banks have stopped lending mm -hmm. and banks having stopped lending, it is only making things worse at the uh, at the state level. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it can't we suddenly can't close the tap in a limited period of three years. So this assistance uh, will have to be phased over a longer period of time, and mm -hmm. we are uh, entirely on board for the kind of reforms that the central government is uh, is uh, wanting us to undertake. But we would want a longer time frame 
and more meaningful and more uh, reasonable time frame to undertake these reforms. Let's shift gears uh, here now and talk about the e-commerce sector. Here again, perhaps Rajasthan is leading the way and we understand that uh, you want to uh, uh, regulate the sector uh, in terms of bringing it under certain laws. Uh, what is the update on that and uh, what is the way forward regarding the e-commerce sector as, as far as Rajasthan is concerned? E-commerce actually, uh, the uh, currently, the e-commerce operates at different levels. One is the level uh, where you had these cash and carry stores. Mm -hmm. That is basically, uh, we had cash and carry stores, Carrefour was in Jaipur, we had Metro in Jaipur and we had uh, Bharti, uh, Bharti Airtel in, uh, in Bharti. Kota. Uh -huh. now, unfortunately what has happened is, because of various, I think, uh, central policies, the two cash and carry stores in Jaipur have folded up. There was a uh, event in, Jaipur, in Delhi and that was a, a road show for promoting investment into the state. Mm -hmm. And there, Krish Iyer, who is the CEO of, uh, of uh, Walmart, he uh, came and met the Chief Minister and he says that he has surveyed the uh, Rajasthan market and he wants to open, uh, open cash and carry stores in, in a number of cities in Rajasthan and that he wants to tap into those opportunities and that he wants only land, his only request from the state government is that the state government should provide land to meet his requirements in each of these cities and land requirements are between 4 to 5 acres. Mm -hmm. and this is the state government and he is willing to buy it, but the, uh, uh, that land outright. Mm -hmm. So if that land is made available, he will be able to put up these stores mm -hmm. and then Walmart can make a, a big bang entry in Rajasthan. Let me now uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, talk to you about uh, ease of doing business. Uh, there is a uh, initiative by the DIPP to have rankings within states regarding ease of doing business. Of course, Rajasthan, uh, we understand, has given inputs regarding that uh, uh, as far as the state ranking is concerned. So what is the kind of ranking that you are targeting, sir? We are, ta uh, we are targeting uh, within the top five and we have no doubt that we will uh, feature well within the top five because we have done, there are about 286 parameters that have been identified by the central government and uh, all states are being ranked on the basis of their, uh, their performance against those 286 parameters. We have done our own self-assessment. We find that we have, all, we have fulfilled uh, 240 of those parameters and the balanced 40-odd, uh, a large number of them are not applicable, uh, not relevant in the context of Rajasthan. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, 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 I think the, 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 uh, all states have completed their, uh, yeah, and 15 July was the last day for submission of their uh, report to the central government. Central government has uh, sent consultancy teams and uh, covered all the states, including Rajasthan, mm -hmm. and we are expecting the, uh, the results out within this month. Right. And we hope once the ranking of states takes place on the uh, parameters for ease of doing business, we should rank uh, amongst the top five, if not the top three. My last question to you is, sir, uh, you know, the new government has, uh, in the center, has floated this idea about, uh, you know, cooperative federalism. At the same time, it also talks about competitive federalism and asks states to compete uh, to, to, uh, to basically uh, uh, seek out investments, uh, both domestic and foreign. Does this strategy work and, and uh, how has Rajasthan's experience been as far as uh, this competition is concerned? We are, we are all for competition. And I think it is, uh, this is, I think this is something, uh, this, uh, the sense that the Prime Minister has conveyed and this is, I think, uh, well, been welcomed by most states. And this is something that states have been, uh, have been uh, aspiring for, an opportunity to unleash the competitive spirits of the states. And it is, and I think it is, it is uh, the labor reforms, the uh, reforms in land, in, uh, and, uh, and the reforms in, in from, uh, for, for geared towards promoting investment, investments the, in, uh, in renewable energy policies, the mineral policy, the uh, and now this the MSME policy which is on the anvil, the tourism uh, policy as different from the tourism unit policy which has already been released. Mm -hmm. All these are uh, pointers towards that. Mm -hmm. I think this is I can speak for my state, and I'm sure similar initiatives are underway in other states. States are vying with one another to try and bring improve the investment environment within their state because they believe that unless until and unless investments come in employment and job creation will not take place and unless and until job creation takes place the the economy i mean the, the revenues that will accrue to the states will not happen and without huge spurt in revenues you will not be able, able to address the issues of uh, social justice mr cs rajan thank you so much for joining us and all the best for your new endeavors regarding attracting investments into rajasthan thank you so much for joining thank us thank you so much